This is the Earth Science Classroom. Welcome back to the channel. This video is on the sea horizon. It is part of or one of the layers of the soil profile, part of the soil science playlist. I'm looking at the characteristics and formation of this amazing sea horizon, which lays the foundation for our soil above it. So to begin with, we discussed the sea horizon, which we can see in this middle diagram. You can see the sea horizon is the first layer above the bedrock or our horizon. And in the opposite sense, it is the lowest layer of soil or substratum or layer of soil before you get to the bedrock. Now the sea horizon is very important. Now imagine a, an area of landscape or relief that looks like the left hand picture and you've got this scattered small areas of soil but you have a lot of this exposed rock this exposed bedrock this outcropping now in this case it's a bunch of nice metamorphic nice rock and some granite and some quartzite but you have this hard rock layer that's on the surface horizon and what's going to happen is there's certain steps or processes that take place to transform an area like like on the left with lots of bedrock and exposed rock with little soil to an area on the right here on this picture here on the right with a lush forest environment with lush grasses trees and shrubs and i assume a very thick and layered soil so what we have on the uh, left hand side right here on this left hand diagram we have the left side which is just a solid piece of exposed rock on the surface could be metamorphic igneous or most likely sedimentary remember sedimentary covers 75 percent of the earth's surface because of the way it's formed now this rock is going to go through first the mechanical and physical weathering which is the deterioration and breakdown of the rock physically bringing them smaller pieces, making it larger surface area. And then you'll have some chemical weathering take place where there's alterations to the chemical composition of the rock, where you'll start to dissolve and hydration, oxidation, hydrolysis, all those types of chemical weathering will occur on the rock and start to break it down. What's gonna happen is it'll turn into this, this diagram right here on the right hand side, where you'll have the top part, which is the surface horizon right here at the top, you'll have this disintegrated, broken down bits of bedrock, now smaller at the top, which is now called parent material. It's material made from the bedrock. Now, we might have some deposition, some, some material that has been brought to the location, either alluvium, which is through floods, or loess, which is through uh, glaciers maybe, or some glacial till, or maybe some aeolian or eolian deposits, which is from wind. But you can have transport material, most likely from rivers and streams, to this location. And in addition, the bedrocks can be broken down by the climate, by the, the precip, by the temperature, by the seasonality. All those things are gonna break down the rock, mechanically and chemically which is gonna create this first initial sea horizon. Now, as the sea horizon starts to form, you concurrently have an A horizon, which is mostly going to be a mineral and organic mix, where you'll have an organic or biotic component, the organisms, both microorganisms, both earthworms and bacteria and vegetation, shrubs, grasses, roots start to develop along with the breakdown of the rock. So as it's breaking down into small and small pieces, you get the continuation of organic material building up as a higher concentration at the surface. Maybe you might get a small O-horizon and litter falling down and decomposition, but you'll have this A-horizon forming with the C-horizon in the very immature soils that have just been around for a short time. Now, a short time could be 100 to 400 years. Soils take a long time to develop. The soils that have a deep five horizon that are one and a half meters deep down to the bedrock could be a thousand years old. So this process takes time. And this deteriorated, broken down bits of rock is the parent material, which is what the sea horizon is 
mostly made of. It's mostly a mineral horizon with very little organic material, if any. So we know how the sea horizon forms. It's through the breakdown physically and chemically of the bedrock at a certain speed or rate based on the composition of the rock and the mineral composition and the speed and rate of weathering, which can change per location, per climate over a certain period of time. And this is called the substratum or soil base. It's the bottom layer of the soil, which is the interface between the solid rock that's consolidated and the organic mixture, mineral mixture with, with air pockets and water. Now it forms the foundation for soil, as I said before, concurrently as the sea horizon is developing, you'd have the continuation or addition of organic material, both living and non-living, added to the surface and that would seep down and develop deeper and deeper and deeper as the sea horizon becomes thicker and more mature. So this is part of the initiation of how soil forms. And the sea horizon has a range of particle sizes. So at the very top of the sea horizon, which is right on the border before the uh, B horizon, which is the zone of accumulation of clay minerals and colloids, that is going to be smaller pieces of parent material. And as you go deeper down towards the R horizon, you get that larger material until it gets to the point where there is no more breaks and no more individual pieces. It's just one flat, one continuous consolidated material of, of rock. So this is a very different layer. So the O, the A, the E, and the B are variations of different levels of organic material and leaching, percolation, alluviation, illuviation, and a mixture of those three or four components. Whereas the sea horizon really just is a mineral layer of broken down bits of rock. I mean, the average depth is between 40 and 50 centimeters, but can be deeper in some parts, or again, it can be very close to the surface or could be the surface horizon when that soil or that area is starting to develop soil in a very immature soil, that initial weathering of the bedrock. And in terms of any kind of organic material and root development, there really is very little root development in this layer because of the level of compaction and depth that you won't get root development happening because it's not as easy for the roots to get down, there isn't much organic material and there's no real need for the roots to go that deep, in term, maybe for in terms of just structure of the tree or whatever's above it, maybe in terms of uh, certain extreme areas or, or gradients might go leap deeper, but in terms of the functionality there isn't much organic material down there or microorganisms, so the nutrient exchange, the cation exchange and the anion exchange isn't always happening there below the B horizon, so there's no real need for the roots to go down that deep. So the C horizon is broken into two subordinates, the C1 and C2. The C1 layer is, this is the half that's the top half of the sea horizon that's closer to the B. We do have some leaching may occur into this area, but the sediment size is small enough to still have some pore spaces for movement of water percolating through down to the water table. Then you have C2, which again is that larger rock debris and parent material that is going to again get increasingly larger until you get to the point where the R horizon starts, that boundary, and you have that consolidated solid piece of rock that the C horizon originally derived from or weathered from. This is the Earth Science Classroom. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the content. Uh, check out more videos on our channel and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you again.